Last VLOOKUP is an amazing function to know to perform powerful lookups. After you've been using it for a while, you're going to start to come across some of its limitations. So in this lesson, I want to just briefly talk about the limitations of VLOOKUP and then show you a better, more flexible way of performing lookups. So let's just review. Now, when it comes to VLOOKUP, if we take a look at this first example that we were using, we're looking up the part number in the parts catalog and we're returning either the description or the price. And the way that we construct the VLOOKUP is we say, look up the part number and then return me either column two or column three. Now, the big limitation with VLOOKUP is that your lookup value must always be to the left of what it is that you're looking up because we can't count back columns. For example, I couldn't use the price to look up the part number using VLOOKUP because when it comes to the part of the formula where we have to enter in a column number, I can't say count back minus two columns to get the part number. It always has to be a positive going from left to right. So the biggest limitation here when using VLOOKUP is that your lookup value either has to be in the first column or to the left of whatever it is that you want to return. Now that might be absolutely fine in 90% of scenarios that you're going to come across, but you're definitely gonna come across some situations where you're going to need a more powerful and flexible way to perform lookups. And that is where index and match come in. So let's take a look at these two functions. Now index and match are two separate functions in their own right, but you often hear them used together in the same sentence because they are used together so often to perform complex and powerful lookups. And the beauty with using index and match to perform your lookup as opposed to something like VLOOKUP is that it doesn't matter where your lookup value is in the table and what column you want to return, it's always going to work. So let's take a look at this example first of all. I have a table over here which shows me some categories, some apps, the revenue those apps have generated and the profit. And what I want to do is be able to select an app from this drop-down list and have it return the category, the profit and the revenue for that app. Now I'm going to be using the app as the lookup value in this table. Now the app is in column number two. So when it comes to returning the category, I'm effectively having to look up a column going from right to left. So this is a perfect example of where VLOOKUP wouldn't work because we can't have the lookup value in column two and return a result from column one. So we need a better way of doing this. Now, before we actually combine index and match together to perform this lookup, I want to show you what each one does in its own right, which will help you understand why they work so well when used together. So I'm gonna click in cell H6, and let's take a look at what index does first of all. Now index has a couple of different sets of arguments that you can use here. And I would say that the first group of arguments is the one that you're going to use most of the time. Now the first argument here is array. Now the way that I like to remember this is, what is it that I'm looking to return here? I'm looking to return the category. So my array is going to be the category. And an array is effectively another word for range. So our first argument is going to be the category range, the category array, comma. I now need to provide the row number of the item I want to return. Now I want to return the category for the application OneDrive. So if I take a look at my table and find OneDrive, it's just here, what is the row number? Well, if we start at the top, one, two, three, four, five, six, it's row number seven. So if I type row seven in here, close my bracket and hit enter, it's gonna pull back the category of productivity. And if I take a look at that, I can see that yes, that is correct. Now I know exactly what you're thinking at this stage. You're probably thinking, well, that's a bit tedious, having to manually count down to find the row number. And you would be correct. 
We have a very small data set here, so it's not too much of a bother for me to count down. But what if I had a data set that had hundreds or thousands of rows? I'm really not going to want to spend time counting down the rows to find the value that I need. So we need to find a way of automating the finding of this row number. So with that in mind, let's take a look at what the match function does on its own. We're going to type in equals match. Now for this one, we have three arguments. The last argument is an optional argument. The first argument is lookup value. Well, our lookup value is OneDrive. What is the lookup array? So where will we find the value OneDrive? Which range? Well, we're going to find it in the app range. So that is our lookup array. Do we want to do an exact match here? Yes, we do. I want to exactly match the word OneDrive in the table. So I want a zero argument on the end. Let's close the bracket and hit enter and take a look at that. It returns the row number that OneDrive sits in. So the match function will do what we need it to do. It's going to automate the finding of the row number. So now we know what each of those functions do. We can combine them together to perform this lookup. So let's start from the top. We're going to type in index. What is our array? Well, our array is what we're looking to return, the category, comma. Now we need to provide the row number. So this is where we're going to use our match function. So we're going to go straight into match. Our lookup value is OneDrive, cell H5. Where are we going to find that? Well, it exists in the app range. So this is our lookup array. And we want to do an exact match of the word OneDrive in the table. We need to close off our match, close off our index, hit enter, and now we get our category. And I should find that if I change this to something else, that's the same category, let's choose something else, it's going to work correctly. Let's do it again, equals index. What is our array? Well, this time we're looking to return the profit. So this is our array just here. Row number, well, we want to use match to automate that for us. The lookup value is H5. We're going to find that value in the apps list. That is our lookup array. And we want to exactly match the word Instagram. So we want a zero on the end there. Close off our match, close off our index and hit enter. Let's double check. So let's find Instagram in this list. Yes, it is in the category social media and the profit is 78680. Now we're going to do this again for the revenue. I'm going to do this in a slightly different way. So you can see a couple of other techniques. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a look at my data and I'm going to create named ranges for each of these columns. And then I can use those named ranges in my formula. Now, a quick way to do this is to select everything in the table up to the formulas tab. And then in the defined names group, I'm going to say create from selection. And I want to use the top row as the names for my ranges. Let's click on OK. So now what I should find if I click the name box drop down is that I have four different named ranges here and they've all been named according to the column heading. If I select category from here, that is the range that it refers to. If I select revenue, that is the range. Now you don't have to do this. I'm just showing you a different way that you could construct this formula. I could then say index. This time I'm looking up the revenue. So instead of selecting this range of cells, I could use the named range. So we can type it in or we can press the F3 key and select it from here. We then straight into our match to find that row number. Lookup value is whatever we have in cell H5. Our lookup array, where are we going to find this? Well, we're going to find it in the apps list. Now, because I also have this as a named range, I can press F3 again and choose app. And I want to exactly match the name Instagram in the table. So we've got a zero on the end. So let's just take a moment to review what we have there because we've used two named ranges in this formula. 
And the reason why I like to use named ranges is because it does make it a lot easier, particularly if you have a much larger data set than I have here, because it means you're not having to keep selecting cell ranges. You can just use the name, but it also makes formulas a lot easier for anybody who's looking at this spreadsheet to understand. Now I need to add another bracket on the end here, hit enter, and there I get my result. Let's check to make sure this is working. Let's choose something else. Twitter, let's double check in the table that is in the social media category. Revenue is 17,760 and profit is 800. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there and click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.